So what's my challenge for today? So these are the voyages of this presentation and we as content marketers, content strategists or content writers, we all share the same problems. And some of these problems are about the processes that we have. We have a lot of diverse processes. And when you ask, for example, 10 companies, how do you um, write content, you get at least 11 different answers. Because every company has different processes, even within the company, they have different processes. And there's a lot of you know, emails uh, going uh, uh, back and forth. And if you really want to create uh, content agile and driven by objectives, uh, then you need to change a couple of things. So that's why I thought it may really makes sense to talk a couple about a couple problems that we all have. So one of these problems is, what should I write about, right? So we all use tools like uh, Google stuff, like analytics, keyword planner from AdWords. Uh, we try to plan this stuff in Jira or in Marketo, HubSpot, whatever. So we all are used to technology. This is our normal life within marketing. But when it comes to the process of creating the content itself, there's something that's absolutely not data-driven. So if you ask um, most people how they write content, the answer will be, okay, we use Word, or we use a blank sheet of paper, or some they just write in, uh, in, in a notepad. But the thing is, if you use Word, um, and you do not have any data for the writer to give him a better understanding about the user intention, uh, to give him a better understanding about um, the market, there's a lot of miscommunication that can kind of probably go wrong. And when you, and maybe you, this is, this is uh, your typical feeling, when you talk to your writers, maybe you feel like this guy. So you talk and talk and talk, and the problem is sometimes they don't listen. Sometimes you talk to writers and they believe they are the subject matter experts and you don't need to talk to them. They know everything. But the reality is, if you, if, again, if you take a uh, word and I give you the task, hey, come on, please write something about avocados. And that sounds super easy, writing about something about avocados, but to be honest, that's such a huge topic. There are hundreds of thousands of searches behind avocado-related topics. And so you can't just you know, open Word, have a blank sheet of paper, and start writing about avocados. Normally, you have to make super long research to understand what does the user actually want. And this is, this is what we do really care about. So within search metrics, uh, because we started um, within SEO, we, we always wanted to help companies to become more successful in search. And if you want to become more successful in search, you have to think about the user. So remember the presentation from Will Reynolds yesterday. It's about what does the user want? Why does he want the stuff? When does he want the stuff? On which device does he want the stuff? So if you do not have this data, how can you make decisions? And that's the problem. And since uh, three and a half years, we are working on, um, on a solution and algorithms with the data science team, with the, the, the product management team, to kind of give suggestions that kind of um, help marketers to, and writers to overcome these kind of gut feeling moments. Exactly. So another thing, it's another problem. So when, when, when you talk to writers, they, they, they expect simple information. They want to have a simple briefing. And in the past, um, the problem was uh, we, we wanted to give them super simple information, and we ended up uh, by telling him, hey, just use the word avocado, for example, quite often in your text. And then you become relevant. So there is text. So this, for example, this text is live. Um, if you just search for avocado, it has a pretty good ranking. But if you look at the text itself, all these highlighted um, areas, this is where avocado is mentioned. So in total, in, in, a, in a text that's not super long, the term avocado appears over 200 times. So if you read a text and in each sentence avocado is mentioned, I mean, you feel kind of um, awkward after reading the text because it's not about what you really wanted to read, maybe like about the health benefits or about how to grow an avocado. So this is also something where I believe the writers could get better kind of, um, could it get better, out, better texts when they have more data. 
to get data, and this is maybe something you also use to, you use tools. I mean, like Answer the Public that was yesterday shown by, by Will as well. But if you put an avocado and answer the public, you get almost 700 recommendations about avocado. Avocado oil, avocado A or B, avocado salad. So a lot of different things. And then sometimes stupid stuff like avocado song triple. What does it mean? And if I get 700 recommendations back, what do I do with them? So there's no real uh, value for me if I have a lot of data. So, but we need better data because we need the data to understand the user. So you can also use the Keyword Planner. It's, it's another free tool that you can use. But still, again, here, you get hundreds of hundreds of suggestions. And there's no meaning for you how to utilize them. So, and that's why, like I said, it's so important for us to understand what makes successful content I mean, what, what is the DNA of successful content to non-successful content that we, that we invested a lot of time um, to really shed a lot of light on, okay, what should you do to become relevant to really kind of fulfill the user intentions? And we came up with a solution we call Topic Explorer. So this is how it looks live. Um, but let's, let's stick with the avocado example. So when you, when you put in something like avocado, what we want to do is we want to get all, so all these different topics all together, but then we cluster them. You see here in the chart um, different nodes. You see a graph. And important is that, that you take a look on the clustering and the colors, because one cluster here is about um, the nutrition and the health benefits of avocado. Because when, when people search for avocado nutrition or avocado health benefits, they actually expect the same content. They have the same intention, because they want to understand um, what's in an avocado and how can it help me? But this, and then if you look at another topic, avocado tree, for example, avocado trees is a topic that also has a super high search volume, but it's a different intention. Because when someone, and if you open this graph, so you see it's expanding as well, and if someone searches for avocado tree, they're more interested in how can I grow an avocado, what should I do to grow an avocado, etc. So it's a different intention. So it means if you just use a lot of data with hundreds of keyword suggestions, and then you start writing a text, you don't actually know what, the, what does the user wanted. And this is super important for us that we help marketers to find out what does the user want and why and when. Um, and this is um, part of what we call Topic Explorer. The next thing, and this is also super important, um, when you um, want to understand um, this whole concept is most people stick still with this keyword concept. And the reason why they stick with that is because this is how they use a search engine. So if you go to Google or if you talk to your phone, you have one specific query. You ask Google, for example, how to grow an avocado. And this is, this is one specific keyword. But if you really want to understand what does the user want, you have to get rid of this concept and you have to think about why is a topic more important? So I have a couple of examples that I prepared for you. And this is also important because in the age of machine learning, um, search engines are so advanced that they actually understand the meaning of content. So it's not about a keyword, because if I search for something, how to grow an avocado, a search engine would understand what does the content mean and how is it helpful for the user. And then based on the information, it would rank the content. And because I'm using search engines here quite often, the reason I'm using search engines is because they really kind of found out what kind of content is relevant for a search query and when. So if you reverse engineer that knowledge, you can create much better content. So let me give you two examples. If from our perspective, we use our graph that we build and I put into our graph Star Trek plus Captain plus 60 series, I get back James T. Kirk because this is actually what does the user wants to see and read about is James T. Kirk, but it's not about the keyword. It's about Star Trek and Captain and 60 series. Or if you then ask Star Trek and Captain again, but plus the next generation, you get back Jean-Luc Picard. So this is, this is how we do it. So we, we index a lot of content. So we have almost a billion of these search queries and the content behind it. If you index all that stuff, you can build vectors around all these different um, topics. And if you continue, so let's take, for example, just Anakin, and you add something like evil to it, 
you get the vector and then you um, um, land at um, Darth Vader. So it's really not about the keyword Darth Vader, it's about um, what was the name or who became the, the evil Anakin and then it's about Darth Vader. It's the same when you ask Google, for example, um, what's the movie about the two dumb guys? You get back dumb and dumber. So you get a specific answer. So, or if you ask Google, um, what was the movie where they made fun of Star Wars? So what get you back? Spaceballs. Spaceballs. Exactly. So it's not about Spaceballs, the keyword in the moment, it's about the answer. This is exactly this concept. Or if you, if you um, add Jean-Luc Picard and you add evil, which is the same dimension, so it's the same distance, you get back Locutus. So everyone who's familiar with Star Trek knows what I mean, so when he was assimilated. But if you then look at the, these concepts again, you also find similarities because you see that the evil guys, Locutus and Darth Vader, they have um, a short proximity to each other because they're both evil. And if you look at the other guys, Jean-Luc Picard and Anakin in that, in that moment, they're also clustered very closely to each other because they're both um, good people. So this is this is this concept what we mean uh, with topics and these relationships. Okay, let's talk about problem number two. How do I know what the user want to read? How do I know it? One thing you can do, for example, and that's super cool, stuff like answer the public, they do not just provide keywords, they also provide questions. And this is important because when you put in the topic avocado, you get stuff back like how to grow an avocado, it's a typical how question, or what are the health benefits of, of avocados. So if you are a WebMD, for example, and you want to write about the health benefits of an avocado, you should definitely listen to all the questions that people ask about the health benefits, because people also ask stuff about um, is the monosaturated fat in avocado healthy or not. So and then in that moment, um, and this is something we do as well, we cluster all these questions. In that moment when you answer these questions, you can create meaningful content because this is what the user expects. The user doesn't expect just a long text where the word avocado is mentioned a lot. He expects to have concrete answers. So this is what you want. But the next question what you should have is, is this measurable? And maybe you remember a presentation from yesterday where Pavan from um, IBM Watson was talking about um, machine learning and how machines learn and Watson mainly is based on questions um, because this is what Watson actually wants to do to answer these questions. And in the end, if, and if you really kind of um, try to understand the concept, in the end everything is measurable. So if the user has a question about avocado health benefits, you can analyze with data what does he actually want it. You can do it by your own. You can look at, um, for example, um, conversion rates. So how long does the user stay on your site? If you use something like Crazy Egg, you can look on uh, how he's browsing on the page. You can kind of look how people really consume the content. But what we try to do is we try to put some, uh, something like this into a score. We call it content score, super simple, I know. Um, but actually, if, if you look at something like um, search engine results and you kind of go through all these different pages, like I said, Google is able to determine which source is most relevant. And I have two different examples here. The first one is um, a page that um, really talks about proven um, health benefits of an avocado. Um, if you look at the page, it looks very good structured, they have uh, lists, they really talk about the health benefits. That's why they also have a high content score, not because they're ranked number one, no, because they really talk about uh, the health benefits of an avocado, which is something you can analyze. And if you click on um, another very authoritative page, health.com, if you go to this page, you see there's only an image gallery with recipes about avocados. Some of these recipes, they also mention health benefits. But if you as a user search for the health benefits of avocado, very likely an image gallery with recipes is not what you expected. And that's why this page um, with just an image gallery and a little bit of text um, got a score of 17%. 
And if you kind of make this on scale, and this is what we do with the data science team, is we analyze hundreds of millions of, of pages of content, you can actually correlate this uh, with uh, success or non-success, and this is how, how it looks like that normally pages that are higher, um, higher in ranking, they have a higher relevance because search engines, and not just Google, also um, other search engines, they figured out already um, why these, this content is uh, more suitable.